and welcome to Showcase, TRT World's daily arts and culture program coming to you from Istanbul. Today we take a detailed look at an art form that cannot be confined to galleries or museums. And unlike a painting, it can't be collected, possessed or turned into a trophy. You don't need a ticket to see it and there are no hours of operation. Istanbul streets are a showcase for graffiti artists and muralists. They provide some colour and imagination to our day-to-day -day lives in the city. Talented street artist Leo Lunatic takes us through his step-by-step -step process of creating a mural. And all he needs is a few bottles of spray paint and a blank wall. Graffiti and mural artists with big imaginations transform boring concrete walls into colossal canvases. Their pieces vary from scribbled writings to abstract paintings. I'm Mr. Hyor. I was born in Sirte in 1989. I studied business at Karadeniz Technical University and I've been interested in graffiti since 1999. I was born in 1985 in Istanbul. My name is Muhammad Emin Turkmen, but I'm known as Matt on the streets. It's a form of art that allows you to write your name everywhere. It's an ego war between graffiti artists to show who painted more. For me, graffiti is met because it created met. 
and it directed my life. It gave me qualification and shaped my life. I met people that I would never have had the chance to meet. In the beginning, I was painting street walls as a hobby and painting illegally. I've been making money from graffiti for the last four years. I'm painting for prestigious brands and organizations. I worked as an accountant for seven years. I was painting at night and going to my accounting job during the day, doing paperwork with my painted hands. But I had to make a choice between graffiti and working in a corporate company. And I chose graffiti. Graffiti is not a thing to be done as a job. I started graffiti when I was 13, and a boy at that age is not concerned about his future career. Then graffiti was admired by many people over time. Consequently, demands increased, and it became a job. And now I can make a living out of it. I was beaten up by police, security guards, and even by civilians many times. But if someone painted your wall, you could get angry and beat them up too. Once we painted a train car. Then we climbed the bridge to photograph the painting. At that moment, the police noticed us and started running towards us. We tried to run away, but were severely beaten. Me and my friends painted my middle school's wall. Next day, everybody at school was talking about the graffiti. They didn't know who had done it, but they were basically talking about me. And that made me happy. There's so much chaos everywhere in the world today. And as a reaction, I started writing this slogan on walls. Don't make war, make art. We live in a grey city. Graffiti halts this greyness. I believe graffiti adds value and colour to Istanbul. We are the colours of the colourless grey city. To most, it's public art, but to some, it's vandalism. Graffiti becomes a legal concern when it's done without permission. Although artists are often supported and given the green light for their work, some still choose to pursue it illegally and in the dark. This logo can be spotted in almost every district of sprawling Istanbul. A group of men who stroll the streets late at night leave their mark on doors, walls, abandoned houses, and train cars. Our group is called DSK. It stands for Dark Side Kids. We don't paint to vandalize. We don't damage places intentionally. We just want to add color to the city. Nowadays, there are a lot of billboard ads that are forced on society. We don't want to see these. This hobby comes with the risk of arrest, fines, and even imprisonment. But that doesn't stop graffitists. I was jailed in Hamburg, and I paid a fine. Other than that, we had security guards chase us and shoot after us. We were sometimes caught and beaten, but this is all part of the whole experience. The more the risk, the more the thrill. Most of us travel to discover new places, but the graffitists travel just to leave their mark. Seeing my name everywhere makes me happy. I want to be everywhere. It may sound egotistical, but I like it. Many of these graffitists hold 9 to 5 office jobs during the day. Some may well be your financial advisor at the bank or the customer service agent at the grocery store. 
But when night falls, they color the back alleys of your city. For the last five years, Kaduko has welcomed local and international artists onto their streets for the annual Muralist Festival. They're invited to let their imagination run wild and to make their mark on the area's walls. Showcases Miranda Ati has more. Three murals. They're eye-catching, interpretive, and unusual. These murals adorn the walls of Kadikoy Municipality, an official building in the heart of this Istanbul district. They were first painted as part of the Muralist Art Festival. But there's no doubt, they're here to stay. I'm meeting the municipality's head of social media and coordinator of the festival, Ulash Yilmaz, to find out more. We want to combine with the new artistic view, street art, and the, all this uh, lifestyle of Kadikoy. To have chance to, to uh, make uh, provide the, this artist or official buildings, it was a kind of revolutionary uh, approach. Especially uh, in Turkey, official buildings, uh, buildings are so grey, so obscure. It's uh, a kind of negative uh, energy gives. But by this mural, in, the, in our municipality and in the street, uh, we want to provide more uh, positive energy. Take a walk down any street in Kadikoy and you'll probably encounter some street art. The key is how it blends into the surroundings. We want to see art in the street. Uh, we want to reach people, uh, not uh, isolated area. Of course, there are galleries and or we have galleries, uh, art galleries, but in the street we can reach more people. Uh, we can reach the the aunt that living in the in this building, for example. These uh, street kids, uh, the old people can reach and criticize and interpret our arts. For example, by this reason, we want to see art in the street. The artists are a mix. Some are local, while others have come from destinations as diverse as Argentina, Germany, Chile and Kazakhstan. The Muralist Festival began in 2012. Now there are more than 20 murals in various locations in this municipality. And with the addition of five new paintings in this year's festival, Kadokoi will soon be home to 26 pieces of official street art. The Muralist Festival brings creativity to the streets. It blends the anarchic with the traditional and it adds a little colour to local, everyday life. Miranda Atti, TRT World, Istanbul. Gamze Yalchin is one of the muralists that has been adding colour to the streets of Istanbul. Let's take a look at how she decorates the streets. She expressed herself on walls in Istanbul and many other cities. Inspired by both nature and animals, Turkish muralist Gamze Yalçın expresses herself through her colourful combinations of images. So painting in different countries is very important for street artists because we feel more freedom, we feel more uh, creative, that mobility is very important for us. But Gamze doesn't just paint for fun. Her murals also carry social messages, such as the four monkeys on a wall in Istanbul. The painting behind me that I paint last uh, winter in the cold weather, I try to express like we are always talking about three monkeys. Actually, I'm trying to see the fourth monkeys. We are co covering our heart and that is blocking us. It's blocking our emotions and it's blocking our dreams for the future. So I try to, I try to express that feeling. 
Gamze uses the community's role in her art, but she tries to give back more than just her murals. Last year I painted like four, four, four uh, different hospitals in children who lives there. It's a foundation and also another project for like workshops with children, painting with them. And because it's the biggest uh, feature, I think, that if we teach art, if we show art how it works, so then they are getting more and more how they we can bring good things to this world. So this is the starting point for me because I inspired doing murals in Philippines in the dump site when I was painting with children in trash uh, areas with, uh, with friends. Those memories will stay with Gamze for a long time, possibly after her murals lose their colour and the walls crumble. To give us some insight into why street art is so popular globally, we're joined in the studio by Professor Doğan Aslan, who's an artist and an academician at Istanbul Medeniyet University. Thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure to be with you. Tell us about this uh, popular activity and the development of it and its history. Definitely. Um, street art is a visual art that is, um, that's painted on the walls, uh, um, public locations. And uh, when we look at the history, mainly um, these uh, street art, uh, graffiti, um, became a popular in the Bronx in New York around 90, uh, 1980s. And uh, during these days, uh, hip hop uh, culture and uh, uh, street art uh, affected each other. And then um, uh, uh, we have this, some photographs and video that is show that uh, there are some good examples uh, during these days. And uh, there are some names, Kit Haring, the famous um, artist who painted uh, his beautiful drawings on the wall of uh, a Bowery um, mural that is in Soho, it was in Soho. And, uh, and these um, activities is, became uh, uh, popular in, the, in the, these days. Although we have some examples in the 1960s and 70s, but these uh, examples were, uh, were a little bit few. And um, especially uh, 80s and 90s, uh, street art became uh, uh, very popular. And when we look at again this uh, other part of the world in terms of uh, uh, Europe, for example, the Berlin uh, uh, was also the um, uh, uh, main uh, center of the, this uh, street art. Uh, the 80s, as far as I remember, the 1980s, uh, West and uh, uh, East Berlin wall and it became a, a center of um, um, uh, graffiti and uh, street art. And uh, uh, there were some good examples around these times. Again, uh, around this 90s uh, in London, and Banksy's uh, works uh, in Bristol, again, yes. uh, very uh, popular. And uh, he, uh, be, uh, he became an international uh, uh, graffiti artist. And these are the, what I remember in, in terms of the, when we look at the history of uh, uh, street art and uh, graffiti. Mm -hmm. Professor Asa, how and why did people first start uh, expressing themselves on the streets and on the walls? Uh, that's a great question. I think uh, when we look at the, uh, the uh, natural, location, uh, natural concept of this street art, um, if you have an uh, aspiring and a, a young um, artist and you want to show your work, right, and you want to go to museum and gallery, but the museum and galleries, are, uh, 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 they have, they work with the money. So they, uh, they, uh, they, they work with the established artist. So if you are young and if you are looking for such a place, I think the street is the perfect place to show their feelings and minds and uh, ideas. So uh, that is, the, I think, one of the good reason and the best reason for the young people to show their works on the street. And the, uh, having your work on the street, on the wall, is also the democratic way to expose your um, work uh, to the, uh, all the people on the street. But if you have the work you're in a gallery and a museum, is limited. And uh, that's why I think that people uh, like to show their work on the uh, wall, on the street. And uh, if you go to the New York or Paris, Istanbul, and uh, it's a more, uh, it's a general, uh, general um, public that you can see, and which is, I think, much better in terms of the reaching the people. Mm -hmm. Well, the, um, I do like that. That's it. It makes it democratic for artists, definitely, for everybody. Uh, Istanbul is like a, you know, artwork to walk through. Anyway, tell us about this city's relationship with art. 
just briefly? Definitely. Uh, I think it's 15 years uh, or 20 years ago uh, when I was in Istanbul before moving to Europe. Um, there wasn't that much uh, uh, graffiti or street art. But after uh, moving from New York to the, um, Istanbul three years ago, I was shocked that there were a lot of uh, nice, beautiful images uh, in many parts of the, uh, Istanbul, especially in the old city, uh, Istiklal Street and um, um, uh, the Tunnel and the Shishani and Kadik, uh, uh, has a lot of nice um, uh, sign of uh, artists from national and international artworks. And, uh, and, and also the Asian side, Kadike and Mora, uh, you can see the beautiful uh, artworks, uh, graffiti uh, from, again, uh, different uh, background uh, artists. So the Istanbul is, uh, you know, is a unique uh, place, uh, uh, you know, historically and in, uh, in geographically. So and many uh, young artists, they want to show their work uh, to, to, to express their uh, feelings and their ideas uh, on mm -hmm. the walls. Well, these artworks can actually become symbols of cities these days and even tourist destinations. And this is a global phenomenon. Um, are there any other cities that you find especially inspiring? Or well, works? Uh, definitely. I mean, I have been in many cities from uh, Cuba, Havana to Montreal, from uh, New York to uh, Sydney, and even in Africa and Japan. So uh, whenever I go to this city, first things that I do is to go out the street and look at the walls, because wall is the uh, real and raw organic uh, ideas and concept of the artist. And definitely I go to the museum and galleries, but to me the street and the picture images, or whatever you call logos and all kind of uh, visual images and type and uh, lettering, is to me, the art to me is an expression of those uh, people. And, and uh, these are to me is very powerful. And that's why I think in the last 10 years, this uh, 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 graffiti or street art became a very big uh, impact uh, uh, in many uh, 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 countries and cities. Definitely. Well, Professor Aslan, thank you very much for joining us. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. <laughs>Edda Soyla has had her art displayed in galleries from Europe to America, but she decided to take her work to a much bigger space, the streets. I exhibited the wallpaper both in a gallery in Berlin and uh, at the Contemporary Istanbul Art Fair. The work touched people without people able to, having, without people having the luxury to touch the work. It is one thing to be sure um, that the, once the exhibition is over, the installation will be deinstalled safely, packed safely, put away safely. It is another thing to not know, not, to not be sure uh, if the installation will survive the night upon installing it on the streets. Flowers buried in concrete illustrate the contrasts in our lives. In Embedding flowers in concrete, three actions occur. Um, killing, housing, preserving. Flowers placed in concrete don't die right away. Uh, that is observable. Um, they grow weak as time passes, as you can see. But this way of killing helps them preserve their color. On one hand, their lives are taken away. On the other hand, they're given immortality as a result of being housed permanently. After two years, the flowers lose their color and start to decay. But Edda has succeeded in making art a part of daily life. People actually can destroy this work just with a spatula or with a hammer, but they choose not to. People choose not to destroy it. Many people embrace street art, 
It's an opportunity to bring the community together. People that are living here not only allowed me to come here and let me use their streets, use their walls for me to install my work, but also embrace the work to a point where they don't see the work anymore. It, it has become part of their lives. They, the work has touched them to a point that they embrace it, they accept it, and they move on. And it's theirs. The streets are more colorful because of artists like Eda. And by the response of the average citizen, the streets are hungry for more. That's it on Showcase from TRT World Istanbul. We'll be back soon with more from the world of arts and culture. I'm Özlem Ishitan. Thank you for joining us and bye for now.